In this week's project, we're hydro dipping 3D printed parts. Dipping is a post-processing technique that allows you to wrap graphics around objects. So with this method, you can add some pretty cool textures and full-colored graphics to your projects. Images can actually wrap around 180 degrees, so you can get some nice details on the sides and edges of your parts. We can even apply graphics to mechanical moving parts like this printed place, No Bearing Fidget Spinner. Hydro dipping is commonly used on machined and injection molded parts, but we found that it also works great on 3D printed parts. So you are able to add high quality textures and graphics without lots of post-processing. It even works with visible layer lines that you get with 3D printed parts. So here's how it works. This type of PVA paper is called water transfer paper and it's mostly used for hydro dipping. The paper has a shiny PVA side and a matted backing that is peeled away. It smells a lot like Elmer's glue and dissolves fairly well in hot water. The PVA film then dissolves when it's submerged in water. The ink then actually floats on the surface of the water. Once set, you can then dip an object over the ink and into the water. It's actually quite simple. Here are some tools and supplies you'll need to do some hydro dipping. Most of these you might already have, but you can get the full list on a tutorial linked in the description. We'll start by printing some graphics using a regular inkjet printer. We just need to print on the PVA side, which is noticeably shiny. It's also a good idea to check the size of our parts can actually fit within the graphics on the page. We found this works better on parts that are 3D printed with light colored filament because that allows the ink to just look the best. We found transparent graphics to be problematic because this needs a good amount of ink to hold the image together as the PVA film dissolves. So the best way to do transparent artwork is to simply add a light gray colored background. And this is easy to do in software like Photoshop or GIMP. After printing our graphics, we need to cut the paper down to size so it can fit inside of our container. We used masking tape to create a frame around the paper. This is really helpful because it makes separating the two layers easier. The tape also helps keep the graphics together as the PVA film dissolves in water. When dipping your parts, we found our hands and fingers can get in the way. We recommend hot gluing a stick of some kind to the part. This will temporarily act as a handle so we can dip without getting our fingers in the way. While the hot glue dries, we can prepare the container with water. We'll use hot water because that will help dissolve the PVA. Just make sure the container is large enough to fit your parts. Now we can peel away the backing from the paper. Start by carefully pulling on one side of the corner and work your way through the whole piece. Use both hands to drape the paper over the surface of the water with the ink side facing up. Within a couple of seconds, you'll notice wrinkles start to form. After 20 seconds or so, the wrinkles will smooth out and start to dissolve, and that's the sign that we're ready to dip. It's really important to dip the part slowly and at a 45 degree angle. Gently lower the part into the water until it's completely submerged. Now we'll need to agitate the water by lightly shaking the part from side to side, and this helps separate the artwork away from the rest of the film. Keep shaking until the excess ink has dissolved away. Then we can safely pull the part out of the water. Use a fan to immediately start drying your part. You'll need to let the parts dry for about an hour, otherwise the ink may smudge. After the part feels dry, go ahead and remove the stick by peeling off the hot glue. Once the ink dries, it hardens and almost feels like a nail polish. It's not scratch proof, but it doesn't easily rub off, so we think it's durable enough for regular use. But if you do need that extra layer of protection, you could try using a coat of some type of protection spray. And of course this works great with injection molded parts. Here we dipped an official Raspberry Pi case with zebra stripes. It's so simple to do and you can get some pretty great results. It just takes a couple of shots to get the technique down. Here are a couple of tips that we found for getting really good results. Make sure you dip your parts at a 45 degree angle. Once you've started dipping, don't stop. If you accidentally lift your part back up, you'll actually tear the film and ruin the graphics. So just remember to keep on dipping. Next, make sure to use both hands when draping the paper on top of the water. Don't let the water get on top of the paper or the whole thing will sink. Make sure to dry the part as soon as you take it out of the water, otherwise the ink will run and seep into the layer lines. And it's totally okay if you mess up the first couple of tries, don't worry because you can actually scrub off the ink. Just run water over the part and scrub off the ink with a paper towel and try again. 
so you won't ruin your part as long as you quickly wash away the veil. And lastly, don't wait too long for the paper to dissolve. It should only take about 20 seconds. After that, the ink will completely separate and just mix into the water. I think the most difficult part about hydro dipping is trying to get precise alignment. So if you're trying to get labels or graphics perfectly centered, you might find it's a little challenging. Typical hydro dipping uses a two-part activator solution. These are additional chemicals that are supposed to help when dipping. We did try using them, but when we did, our parts actually failed. We kept trying, but ultimately we were able to do this without using any of the activators. But that's it, a super easy way to add full color graphics to your DIY projects. So what ideas do you have for hydro dipping? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit every week.